Uh, good evening. Apologies for a slight lateness. I was having a smash burger. Um, and welcome to episode 98 of The Brigaders, uh, the League of Beer and Cotton. Um, I'm joined. Uh, our man in the middle is uh, Mr. Cranham himself. And then we've got um, on the far right. I don't know why I find that so difficult to work out where folk are on the screen because I can just see where you are on the screen. On my far right, I've got Andrew. Um, how are you guys? As you look at it, I'm, I'm on the far right, but you know, realistically, yeah, you're, you're on the far right. Yeah, the far yeah. Just don't know. It's like I forget. It's like oh, I think it's because I'm looking at my pic. I'm looking at myself, and I'm trying to work I, I, out where that am. Have you not still got the L and the R written on your shoes? I don't know. <laughs> I do that. I do that, and then I work it out. Ah, there's the L. No, because like you're on. You're to the right of my. Oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, let's stop. <laughs> let's not stop it. Yeah. Let's not do, do this any further. <laughs> um, yeah, it's so not right. That's what I'm calls not around, eh? Like, we end up just. Uh, <laughs> uh, you're, you're, I'm in a three day space trying to work out where my body reacts to him. Um, all right, so we've got. Um, uh, we've got we're we're, we're, yeah, we're uh, completely. Um, yeah, we're. we're, we're, we're um, I had a whole thing here, and you've just put me off. <laughs> Sorry, man. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know it's been one of those days. Um, yeah, so we're we're we're, we're steamrolling really quite quickly. It'll be our hundredth podcast in a couple of weeks, and we're really excited. So we've um, um we we put out a call a couple of weeks ago to just try and see if if anybody wanted to join us, like guest wise, and um. Um, we, 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 we've been really like um, we've been really honoured to have previous guests from previous podcasts. Obviously, we had Kyle on last week, and um, we've had Steve Tanner on in, in the last couple of weeks, and that as well. And just 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 folk who have um, who have been around and helped us out um, kind of early on in the podcast, and, and have continued to be our friends and be our uh, and be people we enjoy chatting to. And um, our tonight's guest is uh, no um, no exception to that. We've got Bengsky, who is the um, the editor and grand supremo of uh, the seventy-seven. Um, so I'm going to bring him in. He's also, really, really good. If you need, if you need somebody to like make fish or chips for you, all right. Or if you're if you're doing some like room renovations, if you're needing somebody to move things about, um, he's a man of many talents. you will just literally like he'll do anything. <laughs> Here he is. So um, I was having carpet fitted the day after my first show, and I had to move some beds in the middle of the show. And so I think I don't know. Did you did you video that, Nick? Well, what, what, what happened is that uh, um, we were using the software, I think, for the first time, and I just hadn't worked out all that. Because now, if you just decided that you needed to like crack out some furniture removal, I can just do that. I can just so do that. And then this is, you've got to do yeah. this, yeah. Well, yeah, totally. Like, I just didn't know I could do that at the time, so it was just like we were having this chat, and then all of a sudden, you walk past with like carry and stuff. <laughs> it's just like, oh, <laughs> also, I think it was a it was like a two hour show, and we'd done quite heavy drinking that night, so I think we were just kind of I, like... watched, I watched that show, yeah. um, yes, you were all pretty smashed by the end of it. I didn't know, I think I joined it halfway through, and then um, Ben, I didn't know what you were doing, I just thought you were. I don't know actually. I was just like, what's, what's happening here? What's going on? Yeah, I'd had a couple. I'd had a couple of ciders, definitely, definitely <laughs> had a couple of ciders. <laughs> it's a bit early yet, but I'm only drinking the light, the light um, Lidl's brew at the moment. The the, oh. the two point six. So uh, that's okay. just to cool me down. Anyways, love to see you, Bob. I've watched shows that you've both been in, and um, I got to say, I like um, Glass City. That's oh, uh, thank you very much. Yeah, man, that is that is that is cool. That is cool, Mr. Cranner. Nice to meet you as well. Yeah, thank you very much. Nice to meet you. All right. Okay, guys. Okay, so, so yeah, then. it's been a busy day for us. Very busy. Uh, yeah, well, you, so um, well, um, I'm going to bring Dave in because we've got Dave with us as well. We've got uh, Dave Healy is the the writer on the uh, Division Seventy Seven and Silver Jubilee, and is one of the other directors of uh, the Seventy Seven. So really, really amazed that that um, he's he's given us a bit of his time to just chat about about the Seventy Seven and what you guys have been up to and all that kind of stuff, but also. I really want to hear about your fish and chips bacon. But <laughs> 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 further ado, here's, uh, here's, Mr. here's Dave Healy. Well. Hi, folks. Hello, Dave. Hi, Dave. Hey. Hi, uh, nice to meet you all. And you. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Um, yeah, so, right, Bensky, right, what is it? Uh, what, wait, you were, uh, you were in a pub making fish and chips today. <laughs> yeah, helping out a mate. It's um, unfortunately his mum's taken a fall, and uh, oh. she does the cooking normally. So, um, in a previous life, amongst other things, you know, I've been a I've been a cook, and uh, just 
it's honestly, if anyone here or, or people watching have done proper cooking, you know that the shifts are split shifts, like 10 till 3 and 6 till midnight. Nah, this is half past 5 to half past 8. I'm just like, I'm loving it. It's just uh, busman's holiday. So I'm just literally helping out. Just, uh, <laughs> pizzas, fish and chips. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. As well as obviously being an international man of mystery and a media mogul. So uh, that's just... Yeah, well, uh, great. Great. Man of many talents, obviously. Well... There we go. I mean, sure, Dave will back me up, but I'm also a man of many, um, well, you know, spell check requirements. How's your spell checking going, by the way, Nick? I saw your post. It was hilarious. Can anyone help me spell chalk? I wasn't even taking. I wasn't even taking the piss. That was that was that was that was genuinely. That was a genuine error. It was. Uh, I find just, the best way of doing it is to scour every page <laughs> ten times. Then go to print and then find it all afterwards when it's in print. It's brilliant. That's the way to do it, isn't yeah. it? It's... I've done that myself, actually. Sorry, I've never even managed to, to do a reasonable lengthy Facebook post without having to put it up there, publish it, then realise where all the mistakes are, edit it again, put it back up, realise there's still another mistake, and then do it again. Three times. Well, do you know now on Facebook groups? When you edit something in a Facebook group, this is right, Dave, isn't it? You have to resubmit yeah. it, even though you don't know you're submitting it. It has to be approved yeah. again. Yeah, it's, it's Facebook are changing their things. I, I, and we've I, obviously I had a pretty busy day on Facebook. I don't know if it's still the case, but I do sort of recall when uh, it was almost like uh, like a, a badge of shame. If, like, say, like you went on a rant on Facebook and then you sent it, then you read it and then realised that you'd misspelled a few things, so you had to click edit and change some of the words. And that we edit, you know, it comes up that you've edited your post. It's yeah, just yeah. like, it's people, like a, people will go and read the, the original one just so they can pick up your problems. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, one, I once had a three-hour argument with a guy on Facebook about the use of the word there. And there's three different spellings on there, obviously. Yeah, you know, yeah, the short, yeah. there, 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 and they are, the apostrophe. And I got it wrong on one of them. And despite everything I'd written, that was the important thing. The grammar police on Facebook, they're just... They're just crazy. So I'm, I'm, I'm really lucky because, like, my sister who writes for the 77 is one of the directors as well. So mm -hmm. everything I post, it doesn't matter what it is, within a second of me posting it, she'll message me saying, you got that wrong. You got that wrong. So I can, <laughs> I can hear it immediately. Quite literally, she's frightening. How much of that is just your sister wanting to... Oh, it's 100%. Yeah, yeah, she loves it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's totally... That's got, that's, got, that's got nothing to do with the actual quality of the post or any of it. Oh, anything. yeah, she doesn't, like, she doesn't ha -ha. care what I wrote. It's just, yeah, I've got it wrong. Um, to answer your question about my, uh, to, to, to my, my I, I got my proofing done, but um, Colin, Colin uh, Maxwell, our other host and our, our, our local legend, he, he, he does a lot of my proofing. He, he has proofread everything I've done for uh, comic wise until now. And uh, He's great, and he, he gets it, and he, he, he's he's really constructive, and he's really supportive. But I mean, it, it, that when you get like when you think you're almost done, and then you get your uh, you get the things you need to change, and it's like page one, bubble two, page one, bubble four, page one, bubble five, and it is just that is like there's you missed some, you, there's no apostrophe, you've got the wrong there, and it, it was that. Collins actually was a tutor at college. Yeah. She must be used to doing this. I'm surprised she didn't get it back with the red pen marks. You know, everything like scuttled and things like this. And this. <laughs> can, I, can I tell you, so um, obviously, as much as the 77 this year, um, it was a great pleasure to work with um, Steve McManus on Blazer. Yeah. Uh, I proposed it and, 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 and kind of proposed, first of all, cheers, man, the strips which first appeared in issue one and two of the 77. So that's uh, Tinkling Triangles, the sonorous family and uh what was the other one the collector by charlie gillespie did the artwork good stuff it's got hitler in the end of it and it's, it's quite a nice sort of thrill um sort of, I don't know, sort of future shock anyway um basically um we had to with with with, with that we obviously had colin um doing the artwork for a strip so you can you imagine what the relationship was like with me having going back to colin saying could you just change that Thing, if you wouldn't mind, you know, he's kind of like used to the foot, the, 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 the boot is on the other foot, isn't it? If you know what I mean, it's like, well, I, I, think, I think if you'd ask Colin, though, I think he was he was totally honored to work on that, and um, I think he really liked working with Mr. McManus. Like, I think, I think, yeah. uh, I think that that was um, 
the honor of being able to say he'd done that or 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 and 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 i know he maintains a friendship with uh, steve and Madison as well so absolutely well know, so steve's just steve is, um and he made he kind of made it known six months ago when blazer came out um that he was in the mood and wanted to do another um and 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 dave knows because we're clearing the schedule for um our next publication okay so number six the 77 has just come out we're kind of saying it's come out today although me and dave neither of us can show you a copy i don't know nick did you get oh, yours i haven't had mine yet no oh, I, 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 I could just double check just now when you were chatting um i know that i know that you said you're emailing i don't i didn't get a physical copy no no i sent you a physical copy as well yeah, no, i don't arrived. know what's going on with the post we haven't received ours um mm. but they're dropping so number six is out and it's been a pleasure to kind of do the usual thing of hearing people's you know positive uh, responses mm. to it which is fantastic um, we've got an annual coming out as well. Now, that's going to be a massive, massive uh, undertaking. Um, and then it's Blazer 2. So that's the rest of the year. So um, we're going to kind of, it doesn't stop really. Uh, I don't know, where are we, Dave? About 18 months since it all kind of the craziness started, would you say? Is it 18 months, 18 months since we thought, oh, this will be a good idea to do a 2000 AD <laughs> fan scene. And then yeah, it was like, no, no, you can't do that. So, oh, we'll do it our own then. <laughs> and then about 50 hours a week behind the scenes and our own jobs and families later it's great <laughs> it's oh, worked dear. well yeah and you still get picked up on typos and you still get picked up on oh <laughs> yeah 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 she'll be watching this later and saying oh yeah you should have said this should have said that <laughs> <laughs> i've got the first two issues of uh, the 77 i've not got the rest yet but i will pick them up but the first two are fantastic Oh, that's yeah, very I mean, kind. I mean, we we personally feel that it, it's like one was, how can we put it? It was almost like we didn't mean to make a comic, if you know what I mean. It was that kind of, we made a comic, but we didn't really mean to make a comic. And then we went, we've done number one. We better really kind of go ahead and continue this and take it somewhere. So I think we've incrementally um, just pushed it forward. And uh, it gets harder though, Dave, doesn't it? Really, the amount of work we have yeah, to do. Yeah, it does get harder, but it's a lot more rewarding because... I think you're in a situation where we were definitely finding our feet for the first two issues because we'd yeah. never done anything like this before. I mean, I know you'd worked on uh, Skate Mut Mutants from the Eight Dimension, but this is totally different. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, you, you're sort of like cat wrangling artists, writers, letterers. And, and as, it, as it's gone on, it's got a lot easier. But I mean, I think we really hit our stride around about issue four, and each issue's got better since then. So, right. it's, uh, yeah, I, th I think we're getting there now. It's, uh, so, what very have we done? I think we've product. done. So we've done now between us, me and you, we've done seven Kickstarters, six for the 77, Blazer. Yeah, Blazer. So by the end of the year, I think we'll be into double figures. And well, that amazing. doesn't get any easier. It just kind of, we kind of, I don't know, we can gauge things a little bit easier about what targets to need and how much stuff costs. And we honestly, you get some great um, relationships as well. We've built some brilliant professional relationships in terms of maybe the stuff which people wouldn't appreciate. Um, obviously the creators, fantastic bunch of people but people like distributors and stuff like that is really what you need to work with so um adrian and with, uh, and with the fans as well to be fair i yeah. mean i mean it's brilliant the relationship we've got the creators but having the actual groups that we we run you get to yeah. talk to the actual people who are buying the comics and 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 we can happily say that the comic has changed direction on certain things because of what's been suggested by the people who buy the comic and i don't i don't think obviously that's it's a lot more difficult for that to happen at somewhere like Marvel DC or Rebellion because, you know, you are just one amongst many thousands of fans. But whereas we're obviously selling to like the hundreds, well, it's, 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 very it's small, you know, to very small comics. That's unique to very small comics. The bigger a comic is, the less interest almost they take in, in what the fans are saying. Um, absolutely, absolutely. It's so, like for issue, if, if for issue six, we was um, we needed some letters for the letters page. So I actually got in touch with some of the some of the people on the group says do you mind writing us a few lines like you know and then obviously they, they're like what you want me to write for you like, yeah 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 we'll, we'll give you something nice for it and they, obviously you get some you get the fan mail from that as well and there's there's like obviously there's artists who've come along who have sent us fan art and it's been published and there's one or two that are not a million miles away from being in the 77 themselves and these these are people who've like sort of scribbled away at home and you know never thought any much of it and they've been encouraged, like you know, not just by myself, but by a lot of the artists who are working on the seventy-seven, and they're, they're bringing it forward. It's it's nice to see. It's because yeah, at the end of the day, I mean, you know, we're fans as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a lot of chat, isn't there? We know that. We know, for example, and yeah, can say names. We know that Ben McLeod will speak with 
Ian Stopforth, and Ben, you know, has been pro. He was with 2000 AD 20 years ago. He's had a sabbatical. Ian, Ian, who did the cover for number six, um, is a is a is a fully trained fine artist, all painted work, and but you know hasn't really done a lot of comics. And 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 these people can come together through our our groups and the way we kind of work. And 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 it's it's really interesting how they work together. There's a lot of stuff they're saying which we don't know. Going so this is Ian's cover. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's stunning. It's really really smart. Yeah, really, yes. really evocative as well, isn't it? Um, mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's uh, we're kind of hoping it's going to be the action uh, one with um, you know, uh, kids rule okay, kind of you know, that notion mm. of the kid with the gun is we want it to be slightly um, caught in controversy. I'm perfectly happy yeah, to have that, no, definitely, but you yeah. need to open it inside to understand what the context is, and I think that's yeah. the oh, so fantastic. So, you can show what we got here. So, the next bit yeah. here this is half the page. Like the yeah. yeah, this is how Laren's, um, it's a wraparound cover. So this is uh, Dave. This is, do you want to say a little bit about the script in this one, mate? Yeah, yeah. Well, I went to Vision 77. It, it's a, a sort of fairly simple idea. It's a high concept. It, um, basically, aliens came to Earth to save us from a global pandemic. I did actually start writing it before the COVID pandemic. I'd just, I'd just, <laughs> I'd, I'd stuck the news on one day and there was a few people ill in Wuhan, literally. And I thought, oh, oh. I'll go with that. I'll have an idea. Not thinking where we'd be 18 months later. Mm. And basically, aliens come along, save Earth, or do they? And uh, they ask people to come along and fight for them in their wars. Uh, and a thousand years later, they're still doing it, being manipulated. And uh, Hal Laren's um, done this strip. This is the origins of the actual Division 77, yeah. how they came to be. And uh, the art is just fantastic. He's such an amazing artist. I mean, I'm a yeah. big fan of Hal Laren. It's, uh, yeah, it's good stuff. He's, he's, so, any of you um, read um, Space Warp? Uh, yeah, um, uh, uh, yeah, I've, uh, the so this is a, so this is Aid Hughes, who's going to be back in the second Space Warp. So V, the gladiatorial yeah, kind of strip. Sorry, this, one, this one here, yeah. that's right. So this is Aid Hughes, who Dave, he shares a profession with you. Do you want to share that, mate? <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's uh, like me, not delivering issues of the seventy seven this week because they don't appear to be anywhere. Yeah, he's a postman, same as me. Yeah, he's uh, he works over in Wales, which is obviously a lot nicer than where I live. So it's uh, yeah, it's he's just incredible, and I, I don't and know Darren if he finds Steve, Darren I don't know if I the time to do it. Yeah, Darren's did, done did, a really. Did good you job. recommend Darren? I can't remember how we. Got yeah, Darren's did, yeah, yeah. Like I'd, I'd, I'd seen it. I'd seen his work about, it and I thought, well. Let's go for it. I mean, it's quite interesting. Once again, it, with the evolution of the '77, we started off with a hell of a lot of strips really in black and white in the first issue, simply yeah. because we didn't we didn't have access to colourers. I mean, in issue one of Division '77, we got Phil Elliott to colour it at the last second. Yeah, just to, right. Ben Ben said, "Let's just try it, see what it looks like." We, I'd originally planned for it to be black and white, and then obviously we've had you know we've had people come along. Darren Darren Stevens uh, colours it regularly now, and uh, yeah, he's. We've been really lucky with the people coming on board, and a lot of them are—I wouldn't say they're, they're established regulars in um, comic comics, but they've all had. There's a lot of them had a little bit of work here and there, and yeah. uh, I think they've improved as a result of it. And, and some some of the stuff they're doing now is just fantastic. Yeah. I mean, we think about the caliber of some of the people working, and again, it's like. So I, I met up and always wanted to catch up with Annie Parkhouse, right? So you know, fifty-year professional the most qualified letterer in the country now. Um, obviously, she worked alongside Tom Frame, uh, Steve Potter, 2000 AD, since its inception. And Annie is just the most gentle, lovely lady. I met her up in Carlisle a few weeks ago. And um, she does our lettering and she gives so much advice and helps the younger guys as well, brings them on in terms of, you know, helps us work on the editorial side of the lettering. So um, I think at this point, I think we should also mention, obviously, um, it's a sad thing that happened with regards, obviously, us losing the colleague, but everyone in the wider comics community, we all uh, miss um, Dave Evans, Bolt One. And Bolt was our letterer uh, for a lot of the strips. Yeah. Um, and some of the guys in the, in the comic had only worked with him. So you have to manage that thing where they're kind of, what do we do now? And we then yeah, had to obviously you know, work along them and, and say, well, we can get other people and stuff. Um, and Dave has, Dave has, has left a big hole. Um, you definitely. Know, everybody, definitely. So we, 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 we honoured him with his um, name as the newspaper mark on the, on the cover. Um, 
So uh, Actually, yeah, yeah, I said inside in my um, introduction, I said this one was for him really. Um, yeah. and, 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 and I'm proud of that because it's um, not, I mean, you know, it's not because I haven't read the physical. I mean, I've, I've obviously scoured it and I commissioned it all and been through it and Dave and I have discussed it and all our directors have worked really hard. But I think we can honestly say this is the best one yet. And um, yeah, it's know. definitely. I'm trying to put other stuff up to show, but um, it's I don't want to spoil it at the same yeah. time. Um, as a comic, I know, are you welcome to select a picture from each? I mean, you know, yeah, what can we say? I mean, we, Dave well, was well, saying that they was just from each one. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Dave exactly was saying like that it was about COVID coming in and his story being not influenced by it, but you know, pre it. Well, we've got De Extinction 2040, which is written by um, Paul Goodenough. Um, and if you Google Paul Goodenough, you'll find out that this guy is, uh, he kind of works with Gary, is it Gary Kurtz? I mean, you know, we're talking Star Wars guy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he's MDMB and all that. He's got credits everywhere. Well, he's also kind of, he's the guy who produced the, um, what's the what's the, the um, environmental comic that's out at the moment? Can you remember it, Dave, what the name of that one is? Was it Cybernix? The most important comic in the world at the moment. That's it's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got. It's got. A it's the one with Alan Moore stars in it working on that. All of the stars have done strips and stuff, um, and all a lot of our guys have gone onto that and helped out. Well, Paul's really massive on on environmental issues, but not just that, but humanitarian issues. And in twenty forty discusses the fact that the climate crisis or the climate shift has happened. So it's happened. We, you know, I think we'll all agree. We maybe feel different about the climate than maybe we did a couple of years ago. Mm. you know fires floods you know there's pestilence there's you know not just like you know it seems to be never ending the weather is absolutely extreme well his story is a is almost the last throes of, of 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 where we will find ourselves in a few years time if we not if we don't i'm not sure whether paul's positive enough to say if we don't i think paul's saying this is kind of where we are already this is happening um and i and i i i have seen the, the fleshed out script for the four parts but it's going to be pretty it's, it, it, people who read it and follow it are going to get quite a lot from it and i hope that it does it does get noticed for what it is and um we try and get a balance because i think with the anthology you can do that yeah, you know, yeah. i think it's important sergeant shouty i mean what what's yeah. not to like about sergeant shouty you know loose stringer yeah. caliber of the well, we, 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 we talked about um i can't remember the prog number but there was a there was there was a, a 2000 ad just before christmas and I think 2000 AD is really good normally at getting the balance that like you say, like your, 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 your kind of bleaker stuff. And then your, and, and, and or your, your, you know, your, um, your, 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 your warning tales. And then your, uh, and then your, your, your slightly comedic, uh, your Sergeant Charity or your, you know, your, um, your feral and foe in 2000 AD, you know, son, it's just a wee bit, it's got his tongue in its cheek a wee bit more. Um, but two th uh, there was a prog that 2000 AD put out just before Christmas where it was like, I want to say like the first three stories, the balance wasn't there at all. And it was just, and it was, it was really actually unnerving. Like the, 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 the Judge Dredd story was a, what had a, had a bit of a, a sucker punch punchline. It was quite a sore one. And then the tales from death world had another punch. And it was like, well, th this isn't giving up today. <laughs> like we're not getting any, we're not getting any, like we're not getting any silver linings in this. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, but I yeah, we, we, we do build that. I mean, we look to have contrast throughout. That's it, Sergeant Shouty, man. Just the best. So <laughs> the badges have arrived. Lou's, Lou's given us license to um, print Sergeant Shouty badges. So we've got more merchandise available. And he's just a great character in space. No, everyone can hear him shout is the... Uh, is the <laughs> and, um, you know, but there again, we get a chance to, to commission other strips. Here we go. John, uh, John yeah, McCray. Yeah. John McCray, yeah, I mean, he's just wow, <laughs> man's a legend, um, and uh, it's uh, it's a funny strip. Uh, again, it's a fairly funny one. Nice twist at the end. We don't necessarily need to see all the pages, but <laughs> yeah, totally. um, who coloured this one, Dave? Was that was that Darren as well? I believe so. Yes. Yeah, Darren. Yeah, asking he's, you the question. Yeah, the he's, he's, know, he's, he's a machine. He's a machine. Yeah, <laughs> he really he really enjoyed working on that. It was a real treat for him. Yeah. He said to be able to you know. So, uh, yeah, we kind of we kind of look ahead and think how we're going to bring strips in which are going to counterbalance other ones. Um, but we also then suddenly find a bit of gold and then go, well, that was only going to be a one or a two off or something like that, and we want to keep going with this. So 
Um, you can now go now, Dave, because I'm going to talk about your sister. And, you know, I know you don't want me. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I'm more than happy to hear about it. <laughs> okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that strip yeah, you've well, got in the annual, that strip you've got in the annual with the, oh, what yeah. was it? That, the hammer that on the top of the door. We'll talk about that yeah. and your little sister. Yeah, these guys won't know what you're talking about or what I'm talking about, but these two, they <laughs> spar, they spar in the comic. It's so funny. They kind of have their differences, professional differences in the comic as well. It's great. So uh, it's like tick it, tick it, I like, think it's healthy. Tick. They're both having to try and outdo each other. I think it's, I think it's yeah. brilliant. Tick it to the pitch, oh, you're, you're the one benefiting from it, aren't you? I'm the oldest, so I'll always win. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's okay. <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> I can imagine at the moment she's watching this. She'll be she'll be messaging me, you in a minute, mate. Honestly, uh, she'll, she'll be telling me, Mom. <laughs> she'll be getting, a little, <laughs> she'll be getting to comments, Mom. comments here on Facebook. Get in the comments and we'll have them across the screen. And we can do it. We can do it right now. Oh yeah, I'll I'll text you there. <laughs> well, can I ask how how many um, issues do you think you've got coming out? And obviously you're, you're in the sixth one now. How many? How yeah. Many do you know my plan? Because I do have a plan. Dave and I are massive big fans of Warrior. Right. If I could get to 30 in one form or another, That's 12, it. It, we, well, it would take us a few years to do that. I yeah, would be, yeah, yeah. I would say, Mike. But as we go along, the options and the opportunities start changing on what we want to do. Um, <laughs> you know, I had a great conversation. Oh, yeah. Hello, Joe. <laughs> I'll do it. Love you, sis. <laughs> our, our new Joe's just come into the comments to see that. Um, I like this all the time. Yeah. Honestly, we could have a director's <laughs> meeting, and it's just you know, we need an odd number so we can decide things. Otherwise, you know, they can yeah. disagree. But um, no, I mean, I mean, Dave and I have been in conversation the last week or so, and and, and prior to that, we've sort of started to kind of get into it more now. But and I hope you don't, mind. Dave. It's your 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 gift to say, but. Let's be honest, we are looking to roll um, your Division 77 out, aren't we? It, it deserves its own title, you be fair I to think say. so, yeah. I think I think it's um it's reasonably well, it's pretty popular. So it's uh, and I think yeah, I think it'll do quite well on zone. Yeah, it's it's um and we've certainly got the talent besides myself to um to sustain but, it. It's uh, it, I mean I, as far as I'm concerned, this it's minimum thirty parts. So we need to do at least Warrior. Yeah. I mean, v, <laughs> v has been commissioned for 10 parts with Aid. So Steve Bull and, um, and Aid, who Steve's another director. So what we're trying to do within the core of the directors is, 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 is write the IP. So Joe is the writer of um, Red, by, Red by Night, Black by Day. Um, that's going to roll out and continue. Dave Bedford um, has done multivarious strips, but at the moment is working with um, Bruno Stahl, who is also a space warper. Um, and he's doing the, he's got a new strip out called Yarman, uh, which is um, a Viking uh, saga uh, with, with, you know, with the twist. Um, and I'm pleased to say that's going to be, you know, going, continuing forward. But obviously we get people who kind of contact us. So Paul Neal, um, who, who was um, with 2000 AD at some point and done a lot of other writing. Um, Noel Hannon, Noel K. Hannon, um, does a lot of writing. Right, right. Martin, Fisher, Martin Fisher, who does stuff for Star Wars Lego um the mm -hmm. magazines and all the spin-offs of that he's written a strip for us this well a, a, a free parter disposal mm -hmm. and then the guys who come in um we kind of say oh yeah we want to have we want to have you know pros but also you know look who's kind of coming i don't think andrew hadn't been published before is that right dave okay andrew well i mean first. i mean I'll, I'll talk about andrew now because like i'm working with him on silver jubilee now andrew yeah. had almost literally hadn't picked up a pen for nearly 20 years since art school um, until October before last when uh, John Burdis did Droptober where everyone was to draw a piece of Judge Dredd art or 2000 AD art each each day and so he started doing it and um, I saw his work then and he, it's some, so he's obviously got a very highly stylized um, way of way of drawing it's very unique and um, and it's very easily recognisable. And I saw his work, and I thought that's really good. And I, I was, I was saying, in it, funnily enough, I was being interviewed earlier, and I was saying, we we got the script off Bambos Giorgio, called the Cell, and we couldn't really find an artist that really clicked with it. And I said to Ben, I says, well, let's just give Andrew a try. I know he's never done sequential art before, but you know, we could see how it works, and he did it. It worked, 
and he's just gone on from strength to strength. And he's so popular now. He's got people knocking his door literally almost daily, asking him to do stuff for him. Um, and it's a case, and it's a case now where I'm really glad that he's a key part of the 77, and obviously yeah. good, a very good friend. Um, and he wants to stay doing the cell, both the cell and silver jubilee. So he'll be doing that in rotation, rotational arcs. But he's also obviously, you know, he's got other com com comic companies after him as well, like not just not just in the UK either. So he's, it's fantastic to see the progression of someone who's literally yeah. just been, just picked up a pen. Had talent initially, but had been doing other stuff yeah. with his life and career, and then yeah. all of a sudden he's just like really broke onto the scene. I mean, I personally think he's good enough to be in 2000 AD, and I would not be surprised if he doesn't get in there. So oh, it's yeah. uh, it must, that must be something you guys are really proud of, though. Um, I, I don't know, if, I, I don't know if any, I suppose that's going to be my question, but I don't know, was there a point where you thought, um, that the 77 had the potential to be? Kind of a launch pad of, of of sorts for 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 some up and coming, or or a forum, you know, for for up and coming uh, up and coming creatives. Because obviously, two th that that that's probably one of the big things about two thousand AD is 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 the the forum it gave for up and comers to be seen, and then you know, it's, it's yeah. I mean, for myself, I thought I thought. You know, I thought we'd, I thought we'd do okay. I thought we'd do well. I thought we'd got a, a market. We'd got a, a certain fan base by running the ni 1977 group, so we could advertise it well and try and hook people in. But I, I, I initially thought it'd be more a case of us having X 2000 AD artists and writers working for us rather than people coming through and going on and going to on other to things. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, th and I think it's not just the fact that the X 2000, the X 2000. I think. The X two thousand AD artists and so on, and and British comics things. I think they're really getting into it now, and they could easily be back in there as well. And 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 for some and for some of them, it, it was clashes of personality and so on and so forth. And some, sometimes your face doesn't fit at certain places. So I, I think I think the, the standard of work that's being produced by some of the artists. I mean the the writers the writing's mainly in house, and, and the reason for that is because frankly we don't take a wage. So by not taking a wage, we get to give the art the artists, letterers and colorists get more money as a kick from the Kickstarter, so it benefits them as well. As it happens, it, the writing's been well received as well. But you know, I, I think some of the artists, both both sides, both the sort of like legends, as it were, and then the up and coming ones, they're both forging forging a new path, as it were, and, and I think it's doing really well. And um, s some of the stuff that's coming out is just unbelievable. I mean, the the annual's going to be a a real real eye opener because it's literally the size of two normal issues plus it's probably i think it's going to be in hardback as well as softback hopefully and yeah. um <laughs> you know it, the stuff that's going in there and like it's we're not contained to having like four or five pages or six pages all a lot of the stories are like eight pages so you really are able to tell a nice story yeah. for an I anthology mean, pretty soon early on didn't it people let us know that what they wanted was fewer strips and longer but you guys will appreciate this if you're not supplying someone with a living wage, you can't expect them to spend their life doing your stuff. Yeah. So yeah. they've got a job. They're doing something else. What can they afford to give you is enough for six pages a quarter or a foot or, or, or bi-monthly. You know, we have tried going down the bi-monthly route. And to be honest with you, it was a little bit of a bit of a one ask too far. So what we are going to do is I mentioned earlier that we've got so the annuals coming out, then another title. It gives everyone on the seventy-seven a bit of catch-up time. They can get, they can do some other jobs if they want. So Andy and Aid and all these other people. I mean, Aid's probably going to be doing, um, and Bruno are going to be doing the new Space War, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Andy's got a million commissions, and that well, the person we've been speaking to in the states wants him, so he'll be doing some work as well. Um, and and the fact is that Dave, you also need time to put together the next arc of a story, don't you? It's not so easy when it's just backing on to each other. Um, yeah, it's it, yeah, it, it's it's a lot. It's jugg it's juggling a lot of um, artists as well because working with separate artists, obviously one one of them wants it really quickly and the other one wants it at the last minute, and and then like when you get the art back, they may have changed it slightly, so you have to rejig your script and so on. So it's 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 been a learning curve for me. I've really enjoyed it. But it, it, I won't say it's not difficult. 
but I don't think it's anywhere near as difficult. Sorry, writers. It's nowhere near as difficult as drawing. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, but art's just like, wow, I, I can't even draw a stick, man. So I think it's amazing what people do with the art. But um, yeah, it's, it's, there's, it's, nothing, it's, there's nothing more rewarding than, you know, handing that page over to an artist. You know, it's just all script. And then all of a sudden, this absolutely beautiful piece of artwork comes back. To you. I, absolutely. I mean, for me, it's yeah. like, you sort of like you, you create the baby and then you get it back when they're like a teenager and you're going wow <laughs> look what they've done and uh, you know and uh i think nine times out of ten the teenager comes back looking pretty great you know so it's like you know it's it's like until that moment it only exists in your head it's just mm -hmm. words in your head and then suddenly the character that you created is, yeah. is, is, is on a page in front of you that must feel you know pretty special for you, it, you it's, guys. yeah it, I, it's really surreal I mean, I'm fairly new to writing, so I mean, I've, I've wrote a lot of prose in the past, but comics writing it and then seeing it brought out as art, I find it very surreal. It's lovely, it's wonderful, but sometimes I'm looking at it and going, "Wow, I wrote that." It's like you know, it's it's great. I'm speaking, I'm speaking to my friend um, who is is in the, uh, he's in the, the process of writing a novel. Um, we, we, we had we had a conversation the other day about like the difference between comic writing and and prose writing and. Um, um, I, I, I don't know about you and you're right, but I'll sometimes like write something, and then I'll just add a screenshot of a film and just go, "What? Uh, it'd, be, it'd be amazing if you could write a novel the same way." And it would just be like, you know. And then she looked at him a bit like the way Spider Man looked at Emma Stone in that. Yeah. <laughs> Abs absolutely, absolutely. I um, I'm working on a. I mean, I've I've wrote I've wrote the first script for. Um, a western story set in like the eight, obviously the late 1800s and it's uh, it's going to be drawn by pete western who's a bafta winner he's he's done everything he worked on uh who framed roger rabbit uh snow the snowman and snow dogs wonderful wonderful guy he's, he's just literally done everything and he's decided to sort of take up comics in his late 60s and he's amazing and like i was obviously he's, he's a massive fan of um sort of spaghetti westerns or italian westerns like as like a lot of people and we were just there riffing off and we were going well what if we could have like you know the opening scene the opening scene of django and he's walking through the mud and he's going yeah 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 we could do it. and we basically went away and watched a load of films and came back and goes, yeah that bit there that bit there and then, then i write the script i was like yeah that, okay that works just stitching them all together. So, so good, yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. You know, it's 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 homage. <laughs> Division Division seventy seven um, is definitely a standout script. When you started talking about that earlier on, um, straight away I was thinking, I've, I've read this. I know exactly what this is. Um, so yeah, so yeah. Um, yeah, congratulations on this. This is a belter. I'm going to have to now get the, the other four issues so I can find out. What, what I know it, it's a it's a difficult one as well because I started off as well writing. So I'd I'd really love to write a novella of it as well, but it's just finding the time in between work, yeah. family, and the comic. But like, yeah, I definitely I definitely see going forward as pro. Now I can actually see the the characters as well. Mm. of what's been produced I could, it, that's helping me to write as well yeah, because i'm definitely. there going oh yeah don't, don't go like that like you know it's almost like yeah. writing a novel novelization of a film after you've seen it so it's like obviously so much easier um so yeah 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 i've, I've really enjoyed it and um it's certainly going places because i at the end of the first arc in issue five um they've sort of like broken away from where they were and now it's more going to be turned into I mean, I liken the first arc more to sort of Rogue Trooper. The second arc would be more like the VCs, where they're actually sort of travelling a lot more and a lot more fighting. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And, uh, yeah, some of the artists involved are just amazing. Nice. 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 So you've you built your universe now, though, isn't it? So you can... you can. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things yeah. I did first. I, I sort of, like, I came up with the idea of the entire sort of a universe of what was going to go on and why they were doing it. And then, like, from there, it's just, like... And because I've because I've done it that um, Division Seventy Seven have been operating for a thousand years as these sort of cyborg warriors, I can sort of like then write stories from any time within that era. Yeah, it's like like the, the annual stories because um, obviously at the end of the first art things have changed dramatically for them, but the annual is set three hundred years before. So and and the, the more cold calculated killers then, and uh, yeah, it's, it's it's quite interesting to see where I can go with it because I'm. I'm I quite like the idea of being able to sort of like flash forward and flash back and you know sort of not necessarily do it all the same on a sort of linear timeline and obviously we um we, we've got um he's certainly guesting at the moment uh hal laren um who's really well known for his idw and marvel um covers and work that he does um 
Howells knocked uh, a seven page out of the park, I would say. I mean, it's unbelievable. Uh, that, that, that work is just great. And the way he works is fascinating. Every artist is different. So he produces double page spreads. Every single piece is a double page spread. That's how he works. And then the editor either works with it. And, and Brendan, our, our, our pain editor, our editor, um, realizes that actually we obviously the pagination was going to be quite important. But um, when he works in a double page spread, the story does something different. It's kind of a kind of an immersive page thing you're looking at. Yeah. And, um, yeah. That's that's really fascinating because we have artists who are very much traditional, you know, panel by panel. And then we get people who do splash pages and they can work along with that format. And then you get someone like Hal, who's, I mean, his, his work is so different than anybody else's in the comic because it's not painted. It's pure. It's, 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 it's um, all done using, I'm not sure whether he's on Procreate or, you know, which of the drawing tablets he does, but his style is very much um, his own. But he yeah. puts in some real human characteristics into those characters. When you say, Dave, I'd sort of like, were they how you imagined them, or did you describe them to him, or did he just kind of go away? And... Yeah, I, yeah, I, I mean, I, my scripts aren't massively detailed. I, I sort of like, you know, put all the beats in there, and and then I like the artist to sort of challenge me, so that the artist will come back and go, well, can I do this? Can I do that? And then nine times out of ten, I'll say, yeah, yeah, go for it. I hadn't even thought of that. And uh, but how was quite, how was really good actually i've done this script and hal says uh, like half a day later he'd come back with about three pages i was like wow yeah, that was that was quick and i was going yeah yeah that's great and he's going to your shoots all right yeah yeah go ahead to go feel up and i've got to and i've got to thank ben for division 77 because it's got a, a bit of a weird origin story of its own because i'd originally um been commissioned to write a horror story for issue one and it, it fell through literally i think it was about three or four days before the art deadline so he said can you do anything else and i was like <laughs> okay so like, well. I, th I literally threw it together it worked okay and um we got the artist uh, sinclair elliott did a fantastic job on the first four issues yeah. and uh yeah he, he had to rush he had to rush it which is why there was only i think three or four pages in the, the first issue and it just worked out really well and we got phil elliott coloring it overnight for us and uh yeah we haven't looked back since but it, it, it could have been very different if it wasn't for that have they asked you uh, have they asked you dave about your uh, your character calusa okay yeah calusa is the character i have fun with because I, I i don't i like to add a bit of humor in my scripts and uh calusa is just an idiot but he's also one of my best friends in real life and uh, <laughs> and and he literally does everything the wrong way in the comic and it works out okay uh, and he's pretty much like that in real life. And he's a guy who's actually from a, a town called Calusa in California. And he's a loud, brash American. He'll be watching this later, no problems. And he, and he identified with that. He's just, he's wonderful, but he's far too full of life. And, and that's why I, I, I've tried to bring that forward in Calusa. And he's, he's got quite a big part in the origin strip in uh, issue six. So, yeah, he's, he's a good guy. So, so what, what are you guys, uh, what's your, the, the, your, the rest of 2021? Is that, that's that right? 2021 doesn't sound right. 2021. What have you guys got happening for the rest of the year? Well, so writing, writing wise, I'm finished. Yeah, I'm finished writing wise. Yeah, yeah. Apart, I've got, I've got to sort of like work for the next year now and get as many in as I can. Because mm. I've got Andrew on the phone, like issue issue one of well, the first part of Silver Jubilee has been printed today, and he says, "Can I have parts two and three? And I'm like, oh, "Give me, give me uh. a break." <laughs> so, um, so yes, yeah, so I'm going to be working towards that. Um, we've got some other top secret stuff that I can't really talk oh, about, but so, yeah, no, but, no, 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 but, the, but I'm certainly working on something towards next Halloween. So that will be separate from anything that's been done before. We've got Pandora coming out as well, haven't we, Ben? That should be yeah. January, February time. And then yeah. the annual, that's that's going to be out before Christmas. That's so, right. yeah. Um, and ben, Ben's got a lot of work on Blazer too, so I could, I could just sit back and enjoy Ben. Well, I'm gonna have, I'm, to be honest with you, I've been pretty busy up until now. I'm I'm having the next six weeks off, apart from design, finishing the Kickstarter for the um, annual. So Steve, who's not here tonight, is getting his holiday in. Bless him. He comes back next week, and it's all just kicks off for him because he's yeah, got to put the annual. Yeah, and I mean, be, I, I totally understand it because he's got 136 pages to put together. 
Um, we've got our art editor, Brendan. I, I don't know if you – well, we're doing a show on Saturday. You're welcome to all of you drop in. Uh, I don't know if Brendan's going to be here or not because the issue with Brendan is he's in New Zealand. So if you want to do business with Brendan, we would, like, log on now. Well, well, that was well, half the first day because it's half past eight in the morning or half past seven in New Zealand. We remember the first we... time we had you on, Bensky joined us, and it was like we were all we were all mortal because uh, it's like <laughs> it was like half nine, and he's on. He's just like total bushy eyed, like seven o'clock coffee. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> he is like that though. He's a breath he of fresh is, air. Yes. Yeah, he's a lovely. Yeah, boy. he's he's great. He's great, but it's so weird working with somebody who. Obviously, you, you you have no physical with at all. It's just purely yeah. this. But again, I haven't met you guys. And me and Dave, we only meet every couple of years, don't we, at the moment? You know what I mean? I'd like to think we'd have met a bit more this year if it wasn't for certain things. But uh, yeah. But yeah, so what else have we got? Well, we got we are meeting up, aren't we? We're going to be doing... Any, uh, you guys got any events happening this year? Yeah, Thought going, Bubble. So on yeah. Saturday, we've got another, another get-together online, which will be the, have you got your comic yet? What do you think of it, chat? Um... Then on, we got Thought Bubble, which we're trying to do. I was thinking of Lycath, but not sure about that. And Dave and I had made inquiries about Coventry, but that hasn't yeah, really panned we're out. St we're still uh, waiting to hear off that. Yeah, but definitely Thought Bubble's been booked, and we're going to have a big table and um, going to go for it there, aren't we, mate? So uh, Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys can get down to Harrogate. I see Glasgow's got a Comic Con this year as well. Um. There's a few things happening in Glasgow. Yeah, I think. There's, there's a comic market that's been the comic market. Yeah, I've seen it advertised on Facebook. Um, yeah, yes. Me and Colin, me and Colin have got a table for that. Oh. Um, I think well, I'm going to say to Colin. Obviously, I'll send him a whole stack of more um, blazer and stuff because obviously, I take it he'll be doing. Um, is he doing commando? Does he get a load of um, com I'm, commandos? I'm, I'm not sure because we we he um I booked the table I booked the table and then said do you want to share and he was hoping to do the one at lakes he was hoping to get a table at lakes but they haven't got back to him and it's the same yeah. day so um so oh, october 12th 13th yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like so, so he messaged he messaged me and said actually lakes aren't getting back to me and if they do i'm just going to say well thank you so um i haven't we haven't chatted about what he's bringing but i assume i assume it'll be commandos and his, his historic stuff and and blazer because um i think that's what he would yeah. be doing normally anyway so, um, Absolutely. Yeah, it's, I, I understand. I think that um, I've I've not heard too much yet about the comic market. I believe it. It's not really a it's not a convention as such. It's oh. it's purely comic market. Um, I, but I think it's just something really good. It's all kind of it's all Scottish and sort of uh, sort of British um, comic creators. I think there's like thirty two tables of just oh wow a lot of a lot of um. Uh, creator own stuff. So it should be fantastic. And hopefully yeah. no Funkos, yeah. No, hopefully. <laughs> you don't get the Division 77 from Cruise. And Sorry, it's just yeah, all games, and, isn't well, it? Fun, well, fun, funnily enough, Joe is watching. She'll, she'll uh, attest this. Her fiancé, James, he's got a 3D printer and he re and he's a massive fan of uh, on, online board game, war, war, war playing and all that, war, you know, the, 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 with the little figures. So it, it's, I think I think we may end up with a, a little game coming out. No, that's pretty yeah, somewhere cool. Somewhere down the line. But it but won't he's, be he's up, very nice. He's up for design stuff. stuff. Yeah, but just to get out and start meeting up again, I think that's mm. going to be really, really because. But it, it's been very it, for the creatives. Yeah. We've all been out there, burying, you know, busy in doing things. But we we originally created this comic to sell at conventions. That's what it was yeah. about. Yeah, um, that, that, yeah, that was the whole idea. It's just be sold at Lawless last year, last May. That was that was going to be the issue one launch, and <laughs> eighteen months Look later, we're still here. Yeah, it's still not been a convention, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, interesting in putting together a rule set, just like a tabletop skirmish game or something. Yeah, yeah, like that, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Small, small numbers, like you know. But I think it might be interesting. Yeah, yeah because James does. Well, James likes his um his, his RPGs, doesn't he? So yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, three D printers are so cheap these days that you can you can put you know as long as you get the designs in. Yeah, absolutely. Create, create, very simple. Yeah, it's it's good stuff, but it seems seems there's an awful lot of conventions just popping up out of nowhere, so it doesn't quite give you time to sort of set something up when you like. Yeah, it's the, all very the directors last are all, yeah, we're all over the sides of the country, so, so we've got a very good giving friend. us time to organising it. So we got a very good friend of the group, uh, Julie Juliet Appleby, and oh yeah, she's, oh, she's done these bad boys for us. 
Yeah. So just look, you know, and she's, um, you know, she can do multiple passes on a, on a machine and stuff. And I teach as well. I teach design a couple of days mm -hmm. a week. And um, I said, I spoke to a kid and I, I got back to June and said, well, what would you recommend? Because he's asked about it. And she said, it's incredible. For a thousand pounds these days, you can get something that is going to give you top quality. It's just the speed aspect now. It's just the speed yeah. aspect of, you know. I, I guess the bigger the bigger companies have just got dozens of these machines, right? And then all they're all they're all they're 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 and wow. you know, use them to throw minis, like you know, like Warhammer style minis. So, so is the expensive minis? thing? Is it similar to printing? That it's the ink for the printer that's expensive. Is it your resin? No. Or your the, the, the resin, or? the resin costs nothing by comparison to what you can sell the sell the things for. It just takes well, wow. hours. <laughs> like say, right. the, the, you know, the two hundred pound thing will do six minis, but it takes like six hours, and then so if it fails so after four of them, you know, that's a full day's just gone. So. That's yeah, I, I, play, I, mean, I play 40k and um, so that's one of my yep. uh, that's one of my space oh, range. and then that's one of uh, Colin's son um, Callum he does 3d printing um, and he he printed me off that so you're gonna paint that then yeah uh, I, I will get around to it but I was hoping that um, I was hoping that he would do me an entire team of a, of a, a tabletop board game I play because I'm really cool and um, um, but he was saying that it, it takes like an hour and a half to two hours a model so a team of 20 is a couple what's of days. What's the really you know? successful? Um, I went to one in Edinburgh. I went to one in Glasgow. Um, what's the really successful? Warhammer. No, not Warhammer. There's one that kids go to to play. In There's Edinburgh. There's a coffee lounge as well. I'm so sorry? Oh, don't, don't. Don't say Geek Retreat. Retreat, I've please. seen one in Leeds. There's one in yeah, Nottingham. Yeah. That'll be Geek Retreat. And I, Geek I don't want Retreat. To, oh, right. Geek I, Retreat. I don't want to say anything That's too badly about them because I'll end up getting sued. But oh, okay. Okay, okay. It's, okay. A comic and gaming store with a cafe thing isn't a franchisable business, and a lot of oh. people who take these over lose their shirt. <laughs> it's oh, okay. um, the, the best bet. Your best bet is independent shops. I own an, an independent comic and gaming shop. Um, but yeah, if, you know, in, in, in Glasgow you've got West End Games, and you know, in Stirling you've got Common Ground Games. Everywhere's got a, an independent shop, uh, and that's a much better idea. Right. Um, I would, yeah, because I, would, I did all the tours. I, my brother lives in um, my brother lives in Southside. Mm -hmm. And uh, he used to work at, at Ross site. It's so funny because Colin oh, that's that's exactly him with that's a hard hat on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well my brother my brother worked on Charlie for eight years and um yeah. he's a proper, he's a proper guy. He does proper the road work, you know. oh, that's it. Proper engineer. And, um, <laughs> so when I went up there a couple of years back, or a year and a half when we were rolling out one and two, um I mm -hmm. tried to tour, go to the shops, but I ended up going to that really big um that really big supplier there's a i can't remember where it was i think it's on the west side uh or maybe northwest it was a really large depot with all comics you could mm -hmm. go in and buy but they did all of the distribution up there okay um, but yeah. i ended up basically i just went around stores and then i done it all over just taking comics you know and i would like to do that again i would like to get in my car and be the honestly i've got this notion this this it's almost like a kind of a romantic that thing of the american salesman you know his car yeah. full of hoovers i want to go out with boxes of comics and just drop in on people and just give them just do a deal just do deal i love doing deals i think it's great make, make so, youtube uh, videos of you do that make youtube videos of your travels and trying to get into it and then get patreons to support it and things like this and you know yeah that's good idea. Do it. i mean pa patreons i don't know if you've got a patreon already for the for, for we've tried about it, haven't we? I think it was we were discussing that, Dave. Was it you? Or yeah, I mean, it's a difficult. I, I I like the idea of a Patreon, but then again, I also don't like the idea of excluding people. Do you know what I mean? Who can't afford it? It's a it's a difficult one. It's. I, I mean, think just, you've just got them something special, like, like you know, it's like got a to be cover yeah, the only get or something like that. Yeah, it's um, got to be something special. I mean, I mean, the thing is, the way I mean, Ben will Ben will test this. Kickstarter is not something we want to do every time. If we had that, if we had a choice it would be on sale in every comic shop in the land rather than or and wh smith and so on but mm. for starting out for starting out com comics publishers yeah. kickstarter is such an it's not well, just really an easier way of doing it it's just also a more a profitable way of doing it not that we run for profit mm. it's just that the fact that we we're able to pay people more because of it 
and yeah. uh, and, and especially the more Kickstarters you do, you you you, you have a base and you have a, a bunch of people. Obviously, you have hundreds of people who know that they're going to get it. I mean, we we run a Kickstarter that's that's not like many Kickstarters. A lot of Kickstarters for comics, and I I know because I, I project I. I I back loads, I back loads mm. of them. Sorry, love. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hear that. Uh, you know, a situation where, like, sometimes you can pay for a Kickstarter, they're taking your money, and then they'll start producing the comic. Whereas mm. with the 77, the 77 comic is ready to be printed the day that money comes out of the people's banks. And, yeah, and yeah. I think I think that's, I, I'm not saying it's something that's rare. It might be something that happens a lot, but people get used to that. In fact, it works against us because people are actually asking for the comic before it's been printed now, literally as soon as the money's gone out of people's banks, which we yeah, can't. Yeah, they don't know the Kickstarter holds it for three weeks and then it goes into yeah, your account. Yeah. And has to clear Absolutely, yeah. We're, we're in a situation where we can't pay the printers until then. But I, th I think, I think, yeah, I think building a customer relationship is the biggest thing in comics. Yeah. Um, we are so, an so section, aren't we, Dave, where basically, we, we, I mean, we can say now, we pretty much sold out of numbers one and two. Right, which is a good place to be at and we've had a discussion and it's fine to discuss it here so we've had a discussion about what we will do about reprinting and and, and we're, i think what we're going to do is we're going to self-fund it yeah mm -hmm. so if people coming into us they want to buy back issues well we've got three four five but numbers one and two are probably going to be collected and and, and 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 because it's already been done once we don't need to kickstart that so we're at a point where hopefully maybe that that will start being how we go kind of through the through the um collection or, or whatever you consider it um mm -hmm. but as dave's saying i mean we've got 400 and odd names on that um roll of honor and and, and and 50 people have now signed up for a subscription and get my comics um have i don't know how many three or four hundred people buying it you know i've had uh, dave i've had um just one comic shop on today um give him a, a, a shout out um what's it called the space center in sheffield so they want like you know half a dozen of each again yeah. it, someone asked as well a, 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 a forbidden planet doing it but i don't know every single forbidden planet that is stocking it but forbidden planet are stocking well there's, there's, there's two there's two sides to forbidden planets haven't isn't it because they've sold yeah. off the one chain you've got forbidden planet international north and, got, south. and you've got yeah. yeah and basically we're we're in the the ones that are in the north i believe aren't we well, yeah, because we're, we're, we're in Bur we're in Bur yeah we're in Birmingham and we're in Glasgow, so yeah, yeah. so I assume we're at Wolverhampton. But yeah. it's it's just one of those things. It's it's. I think we've done fantastic to get where we are. We'd love to go to the next stage, and and one day yeah. it would be wonderful to have yeah. the you know the W H Smith stands, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you know, it, yeah, it's, it's a difficult starts, process. Start with smaller. Yeah. I'd certainly, I'll, I'll, I'll take some copies and into my, into my shop and stuff like this. Um, I was actually on getting my comics earlier on. Um, and I've got some some variant covers, some of your variant covers in Do my basket. Do you use um, so Comic Toolbox, which is their their kind of their their retailers side? Because no. Adrian has two facing businesses. So get my comics is for the bot for the for the fan. Mm -hmm. to comics Toolbox is for the retailer. And obviously, what happens then is he's already done deals with us. So, for example, you wouldn't need to negotiate. You're going to be paying the standard retail price for them. Um, although, if you got in mm -hmm. touch with us, we would do that um yep. but as dave said i mean basically we're at a point where we would like to start doing the um wh smith thing absolutely and give us an opportunity to do it maybe with the reprint of the comic we'll be we'll be all over it but you have to produce something that people want in those shots so for example he was alluding you weren't he dave about the hardback for the annual but the hardback won't sell in wh smith it has to be a floppy on the floppy shelf so we're going to produce a, um, a retail version of the annual which will be floppy just mm -hmm. so it sits on the shelf because otherwise they don't put it they take it and put it somewhere else and it'll yeah, be next to a bingo that's selling for seven quid yeah. eight quid and ours yeah. is going to be a different price point so it doesn't kind of work that well so imagine comic scene i don't know whether comic scenes was just a hard back in the shops because i know they did a soft back as well but you know tony foster has been quite helpful in terms of you know giving us some understanding about how it's worked for him um but if someone was to say to me Oh, well, you know, all you need is fifty thousand pounds, and you could then break into the comics. Uh, I can tell you, it's no public secret here. We've raised more than that in our Kickstarters, and fifty thousand pounds does not launch a comic. It just doesn't, yeah. it, it, you know, over a period of time. Um, so it's not about money. It seems to be about building your sales, building the, yeah. the connection with the retailers, yeah. and yeah. distribution, like in music or in anything. It's all about distribution, and they're hard people to. Um, 
you know, to, 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 to kind of get in line with. So what happened? Sorry. Diamond went up the wall, didn't it? Just as we were going to oh, prison. You know? I, think, I, think, I, think, I think it was, I think it was the, week, the week after or the week. Yeah. I, I, I seem to remember having, it was when I first met Andrew, there was a diamond issue. It was like, I think when we, when yeah, we had diamond. Diamond. When we had you on diamond for being dicks. <laughs> to, to be fair, it's no like this is a thing which is is, is well known in, sorry, in the comic side, but it's no diamond that really that were being dicks. It was DC <laughs> um, <laughs> primarily. Di diamond were doing everything they can at the start of this to stop independent comic shops from going out of business by making them take stuff that they'd ordered, even though the shops weren't open and they weren't going to be able to sell it. Um, yeah. So they agreed not to put this stuff out and stuff like this, and that's why DC to Cumbridge because then they weren't getting the money for Diamond because they weren't being able to clear their stuff. And DC said, well, we're going somewhere else. And then Marvel went, well, we're going somewhere else as well. And, and yeah. DC tried to do, DC, DC America, this is, tried to do the right thing. Uh, Diamond America. Uh, and I was talking it. with Tom Ward. Do you know Tom who does um, mm -hmm. Mr. Mr. Um, what's it? Uh, Elephant Man, yeah? Mr. The Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. had him on here yeah. a few now, weeks Tom, ago. Tom's business plan is, 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 is brilliant. Obviously, he's, he's lasted 11 issues. He's got the reprints mm -hmm. going. And the shops take them because they're trades. They're trade paperbacks, yeah? And yeah, the margin yeah. for them and the way they, they're not having to buy floppies, mm -hmm. that's the way to go, which is why the 77 is kind of what it is at the price point it is, you know, because we found that the shops, well, they weren't around for a year, but now they're going, oh, well, at that price, we can make, you know, a couple of quid rather than you're selling it for how much and we're only going to make pence. You know, it's not really worth their while taking it. Yeah. Um, some people might take umbrage at price points, but, you know, everyone knows that a graphic novel at 20 quid is more likely to be stocked by a shop than floppies at four quid, you know, with containing mm. the same yeah. stuff. So, so, so single issues are, are struggling a wee bit at the moment. Most people, you know, graphic novels is certainly seems to be the future. Um, it's easier mm. to display on your shelf. You don't have to you know have it in special boxes it's just a, a better read things like this yeah, as, yeah. as a reader yeah. i think a, a graphic novel or something with a bit more substance and it's just you know just you sit back you can sit for you know half an hour as opposed to five minutes <laughs> you know yeah. and it's just yeah. it's, it's a bit of yeah, money it, as well so. yeah it is difficult i two years ago i moved on to buy omnibuses and yeah omnibuses but, are even better uh, but perhaps, you know for a hundred pounds yeah, well, I mean, as my eyes get worse, you're getting oversized. You're getting oversized um, pages, and it looks good on your shelf, like you say. So yeah, yeah. it's, it's uh, you know, I'm, I stop buying proper Yeah, that's that's the way it's going. Yeah. Definitely, I've got thousands of comics in the shop. There. So can I ask you, you at some point, who's up for who's up for a Brian Boland um, Apex gate for um, slipcase, hundred and fifty pound book? Who's up for it? <laughs> I saw it. Yeah, it's really nice. See what you're talking about about the omnibuses. They only publish so many of them and for so a certain length of time. And then once they're out of print, they didn't put them back to print. There's been a big hoorah recently because Marvel have put their stuff back to print. Um, so the secondary market, these omnibuses that, that, that you know had retailed for 79.99 or something like that, were up at two, three hundred pounds per book on the secondary market wow. and then marvel came in and started reprinting them again which upset an awful lot of collectors <laughs> so um but that's the thing if he only puts out so, so many yeah that's an investment well rebellion did that with um that nemesis didn't they because the, mm -hmm. the, the the limiteds they put out of the um the nemesis black the black yeah, the, ones, the yeah. black the heresies yeah the, the, he's yeah. working with delirium wasn't it in france yeah but that was what that was only 30 quid and that seemed quite cheap <laughs> but, but i was quite pleased about that because i bought it and i didn't like the pre i didn't like the color uh, the, in the inking on book three was really awful and it was going for silly money on ebay you so did i thought well it, did you, Dave? I, I, did you I, flipped it? It, I flipped it <laughs> and i made a fair bit of money and the next day they announced they were doing a reprint so that was even funnier but <laughs> but you know, hey but i have been i've been i've been caught many times so I'm, you know it's, if it's you do not, uh if you way. do reprint your issues, you have to make them slightly different. You have to do like the Marvel, like slightly different, like the seventy-seven different color or something like that. Just so yeah, yeah, uh, it will. If be. you do them exactly the same, paper, that's why. Yeah, want to take care of the collectors because they'll, they'll keep coming back. It's, it's fine, isn't it? It's, it's fine, um, isn't it? it, 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 it I think for me and, and me with David as well, it's fine for us because you can you can actually just re-release them without the spell mistakes. Yes, yes. We can eventually that's get around to it. That's pretty much what I've done. <laughs> I, I know there's been several that 
haven't been picked up on with us. So it's yeah. like, yeah, when we go back, we'll definitely be like, yeah. <laughs> For a fine yeah, tooth. I, saw, I, saw just... one. I have found one already in the uh, contents uh, of yeah, one of the yeah. stories. And I'm like, well, I handed it out to all you guys to no, check. That, that's the thing. The six, of, <laughs> the six of us read through the PDF of it before. It, that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That looks great. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> How could you miss that? <laughs> So, so Nick, who, who have you got proofreading? We'll send them. We'll send them our PDFs, and they can check them for us. Who, who have you got? <laughs> uh, Colin does mine. I don't know if anyone actually volunteered or. or, or, or oh no, um, Colin, Colin did it without actually volunteering. Oh, right. He messaged me about an hour later, and he was like, "I've done it for you." Um, uh, all right. Well, let's say proofreading. Can somebody proofread my work? <laughs> 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 it wasn't. It wasn't until I put it up, and then I, I, I forgot about it. And then it wasn't until like friends started, like you know, like wait, people instead of likes, I was getting like laughing emojis, and I was like, <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> so, um, I, I think I, I think it illustrated my need for an editor very, very. I, actually, I think it, the the spell mistake communicated my issue a wee bit better than uh, just asking for a proofy there. So. <laughs> no, but you can say you can say you're being ironic. You're all right. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. I'm, I'm, anyone that knows me knows I'm not clever enough to be right. <laughs> yeah. um, so guys, we're, um, we, we tend to play there about like what we're reading and what we're drinking this week. I don't know if you guys want to hang around or... Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, I'm, like, Dave, I don't know. You got the, have you got the night off or are you... Uh... I'm okay for a bit. <laughs> well, can I, go to the, can I go to the fridge yeah. and get something? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, fridge break for anyone. <laughs> Um, I'll grab something as well. I'm nearly finished. Mine, so. <laughs> the get moved. We've run past the first. <laughs> I'll wait there, but, um, Dave, what are you drinking? I, I'm, I'm, cur I'm currently drinking. Oh, Amazon. two Daves. This is mine. Yeah, so, oh, sorry, man. Sorry. No, 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 no. Dave, go for uh, it. Not really. Yeah. I'm yeah. drinking. Mister, I'm Mister drinking I, Aldi's uh, brew dog. Rip off oh, the anti establishment yeah. one, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, quite, I quite like it actually. I mean, I prefer yeah, it, okay. but yeah. it's uh, I don't mind it at all. And uh, yeah, that man is drinking that. Um, big fan of rum, so it's like on a bit of rum at the moment. Um, any rum, <laughs> basically, yeah, 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 yeah. A large recount, yeah. I like my J, I like my Jaipur. Um, that's a good, yeah, one. it's about, yeah, yeah, it's a nice drop that is as well. I like mm. that in the establishment IPA because um, we, we, we talked about it before about whether Brewdog and Aldi were in on it together because cause Bru Brewdog, yeah. did, Brewdog did a release quite soon after called like Giving It Yaldi and all the... That's the it. Yeah, yeah. And the it's, it's quite weird. You can't, you can't find that in Aldi very often. No, no, and no, no, the no. anti-establishment, I think, is a nice drop than the, uh, the other version they did. But yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Still like Brewdog. I thought Brewdog were a little bit... Uh... Yeah, we're... we're, we're, we're uh, yeah, we talked about yeah. this a few weeks ago. We, 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 I, I ditched my Brew Dog subscription because of the yeah. treatment stuff. Yeah, yeah it's not, it's not great. I mean, they have come out and apologised over it, so you just hope that perhaps things will get better. But yeah. gen generally speaking, I like Brew Dog products. Yeah, I don't, I, yeah it's, 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 a, it's a go to IPA for me. It's a very easy yeah. IPA. You can find it everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's pleasant. The Hazy Jane's really, really nice. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. You know, summer day. Outside, that's just that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which means actually drinking something very similar uh, as my, orig my original beer um, with Garden Brewery. He's oh, yeah. Oh, uh, nice. Which I got in one of my, my brewery boxes. And that was what I was drinking up until about a few minutes ago. And now I'm on some kind of pale ale. This is what we normally do, guys. Just Veronica. Um, oh, very nice. Is that, is that a box beer as well? Is it? That was a box beer. That was this, this yeah. year's brew. This month's brew. I can't remember the company. Yeah. Brew, 50, gonna, see, see, see the, the 51, is the 51, see the box I got? Um, thanks to yourself, Andrew. Mm -hmm. Those beers were amazing. Right, did you go yeah, for they're lights they're or lights handbags? They're great. They're, 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 they're outstanding. There were some in there as well. They were, they were, they were, they were all, all, I think they're all checking. Yeah, you got a snack in a magazine and, 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 and eight beers for like 20 quid a month or something like that. I don't know if you guys have the same issue I do though. I've never had any of the snacks out of that box. Like I've actually had Claire walk in, open the box, take the snack out, and then go upstairs. And I'm like, <laughs> no. 
<laughs> Try them all. It's usually something similar, something strange like pop, chili popcorn or something like that. Yeah, chili, yeah or beer nuts or like some I'm, really. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm going to change my subscription. I'm on light and dark, and every month I'm getting more, more of these um, porters and stouts that I've got, like, <laughs> chocolate or, oh. or fudge or something like that. No. Do you? Know, I discovered uh, on Monday. It, I, I like like a total kick in the teeth, right? Uh, me and my wife have decided that we're both vegetarian and we're vegetarian forever. But um, we both decided that we were going to, you know, sort of try vegan for a bit and see mm -hmm. and, and see if that made a big difference to things. Um, these these chocolate porters and all these like ridiculous beers that I quite like, none of them are vegan because <laughs> they, they they all use lactose oh, and wow. things like that to like to get that flavour over. And so yeah. Because they've usually got like if they've got marshmallow or fudge or anything like yeah, that, yeah, they've they got um, rennet or whatever it's called to, to, to do it. Yeah, so. I stay clear of that because I'm lactose intolerant, so I stay clear of those anyway. Yeah. But I do, I do like an, I do like a nice porter, but I do, I do have to be very careful with them. Yeah. But, but it has to be like a porter's nice or a stout, you know, as long as it's just a plain, like a coffee yeah. porter or something like that. Um, I've got so many tins here that are like, you know, fudge. <laughs> Or they've added, you know, orange really? chocolate or something like that. They're no, they just are not just... the, 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 the ghost bus, the ghostbuster porter that Tiny Rebel do is great. The the, um, the mar toasted marshmallow one. It's really, really, oh, okay. it's really, really, really good. Um, I'm drinking that. Let's see if you can who can go guess the film reference. Uh, I'm drinking this. That's welcome to the, the party, party, pal. Well, uh, die hard, doesn't it? Die hard, die yeah. hard, die. John McLean. <laughs> I got that from a. I got. I got this from my birthday from Colin. It's a. It's a snowball IPA. So like the whatever snowball. the Christmas drink is, the snowball. Snow, snow, snowball. 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 <laughs> ten, 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 ten ten super it, Carlos Park special brew. Um, <laughs> There's nothing worse than tenants. Zero percent. Oh. What the Whoa. hell? <laughs> Cut him off, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's gone. Sorry about that, guys. Right, so <laughs> that was that done. Um, <laughs> next week, we'll have a... <laughs> well, I, I am. Um, I now no longer a brew getter. What's that yeah, special like? bottle? It has been dropped. Oh, that's, okay, but... oh, that's a nice bottle as well, eh? Yeah, that's cool. Zombies so going on there. It's the Charlie Adlard. Yeah. I was going to say, it looks like... That's too oh, far gone. Head. Oh, amazing. Too far yeah, so I got that at uh, a Lycaf. Uh, it's for my wife. She does all of this. She turns up to these gigs, right? <laughs> we went to the, the 2000 AD 40th. She sits in the bar doesn't really pay much attention to what's going on and all of the people that we go and queue for for hours will then sit next to her and buy her a drink and just chat to her do you know what i mean mm. it's just like so hence i'm also reading i'm reading her book so you know basically i'm just she loves she loves predator but she didn't know about judge dread so i've introduced her to judge dread she goes oh there's a there's a crossover i see and this john wagner character's written it i go oh, okay i spoke to this john, john wagner, wagner character that. i spoke to him about that. <laughs> <laughs> my, my wife, my wife, my wife Ben. She, she she does that as well, and she just goes away and she comes back and like, you know, I, I I'll meet. I've met some of my heroes and been really anxious and been like, hi, nice to meet you. Thank you, thank you for your time. And then my wife's just gone in and then like, just like like a, <laughs> like, a like a whirlwind. And she's by the end of it, she's like, I, I'm like, oh, I was really nice you met him. And she's like, I it would be fine if he wasn't like trying to give me his number the whole time. <laughs> 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 you see like. Well, he was quite nice. Yeah, he he was John Wagner. He he created Just Red. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a the guy you had on do, do, who did one of your variant covers um, that I met a few years ago at uh, Aberdeen Comic Con was Glenn Fabry, and um, again, cute. Got him to do a sketch for me, and it was absolutely brilliant. We were staying at the same hotel with me, and it, over the weekend, I hardly saw Glenn without a bottle of beer in his hand, like night and day. Um, but yeah, I ended up like in that night time having a nice couple of years. Probably doesn't nice. remember me because he does that a lot, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dave, we'll just I don't know. Did you stay we did we stay that night, I can't remember, at Lawless. Did you No, you I didn't I, I luckily I didn't stay that night. But I, th I oh think Oh my god. <laughs> there was quite a there was quite, I'm busy, there was, uh, yeah. 
other people don't need to mention names just and then you've got to be up at stupid o'clock the next morning and live mm. you know it's well that, just... that was that was the that was ever since then lawless have refused to allow creators drinks at the tables because it was literally like <laughs> they're, 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 they're doing sketches they're doing fantastic jobs brilliant but it did look like a bar that hadn't been had the tables cleaned away. There was like fifteen or twenty glasses on there, Stella Point glasses on there. I don't think the eighties or seventies have finished, have they? They haven't ended at, at Lawless. It's still no, definitely not. Definitely not. We should we should hopefully have beers with you guys when we come down to um, uh, to come down to Thought Bubble. We and Colin and and uh, Andrew David don't know this yet. But um, we've been invited to brew uh, with a local brewery in, in, in Fife um, and do like a brew good or beer. And with the idea oh, being that when we the idea being wow. that when we come down to Comic Cons, we can just go, hi, hi Ben, hi Dave, here, here's some beer. And yeah, will you give us an interview? <laughs> I can give you a sneak peek of the official the official lawless beer mats. <gasps> oh, those are amazing. Oh, yeah, wicked. So, um, oh, Dave idea. and I agreed we're gonna do we're gonna do this uh, gorilla style at, 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 at um, Thought Bubble as well. Just gonna go around. Oh, and see some idea. Colin pubs leave them on tables and things like that. Uh, Colin, Colin, yeah, suggested, Colin had a similar idea for one of the one of the one of the when we start doing hopefully when we all start doing comic conventions next year. He was talking about doing something with Brugaders and doing the same, like just walking around the uh, like do walking around the um. What, sticking beers called? on tables. No, it's like a beers and tables, so not me the money. Mate, but, like, come on, come to our table. Like going around, going around the conference centres where the bars and conference centres and just popping down the beer racks. I don't know if you're allowed. I don't know if you're allowed to to drink at a table. I mean, I don't mean alcohol even. I I, I think you have to go to a refreshment area. There are lots of stipulations about what you what you can and you can't do. You're not apparently allowed to step inside outside of your table and stand in front of your table. Oh really? Was well, this a thought bubble? Yeah, you have to be behind your table. Okay. And, and, and of course, it's like a COVID thing or just a normal thing? I think it's they, they don't want people being pressurized into buying things, but I'm also thinking, well, you could have a conversation with someone away from the table, just have a chat, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I've been reading all the stipulations, and it's like, ooh. Just, I, I, know, uh, I know they've got quite severe this year because of COVID. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of safety things coming with so many doors being open and sort of ventilation and so on. So it may, it mm. may be something to do with that. Maybe Joe, Joe wants us to know that she's drink she's drinking rock vodka and a Red Bull and eating pork scratchings. <laughs> Sounds um, all right, to be honest. Not is she bad. vaping? Joe, Joe, are you vaping? <laughs> and uh, Stuart, um our friend Stuart is saying that he um he's drinking Volk City Bruins Pina Colada session, sir. Ooh. Oh, oh man. I don't, I don't, I'm not a big fan of, of, of pineapple and, and, and coconut. Pina colada is not a great thing for me. So, yeah, next I, I love pineapples, but I'm not so keen. Yeah, I don't like pina colada or getting caught yeah. in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I, love, I love both of those things. I'm, but I'll tell you what I don't like. I don't like a sour. Um, yeah, I'm not keen on sours. So sour beers are just something I don't really particularly enjoy. So, oh, um, so you don't like your citrus? Is that what you mean? Those ones? No, I... Um, Sours are like it's like the next step on. It's not. It's not like. Yeah, it's it's not like it's not like. Yeah. It's oh, the very like the very acidic. Yeah. Mm. But, yeah. I quite like yeah. I quite like uh, grapefruit IPAs when I find them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's some really yeah. nice ones. Yeah. There are some good ones. Yeah. Is Stuart Brown a really good one called First World Problems? That's really good. Yeah. And um, yeah. Um, oh, bro, what about uh, what about comics, guys? Has anyone been reading anything good this week? I finally got around to reading one that I picked up at a convention um, from a, a local artist, a local writer, George Lennox. Oh, so yeah. Um, uh, we, had, we had John. Oh, uh, that looks, on, that's great. Yeah. I, 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 I can post screen you. Give me a second. Uh, is, yeah. it, is, is everything you wanted Vietnam zombie oh, Holocaust? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, and there's a bit of Vietnam in it, um, a bit of zombies. Some of the artwork, fans of the. the you will wow. you to pick up the reference right away there. You guys for the 77. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That is lovely. It's just, yeah, that very, very good. That reborn to kill, that reborn to kill thing's really clever as well, isn't it? It's, it's, mm -hmm. Yeah. So hey, I, 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 I picked this up at a convention, got him to sign it, and I've been working through that this week. Did your copy of V2A landed? V2A, yeah, I've had mine, yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, have you read it? Have you gone through it? Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I did a review of it. So yeah, they're doing good. another one as well, are they? Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, it's sold well. Yeah, it's it's good. Did anyone else pick that up? V two V two A. I didn't know. Yeah, it's, so it's uh, that was a Kickstarter as well. Yeah. Okay. Of, um, there's, there's quite a few 2000 AD um, creators in there. Yeah, it's very very Mad Max. Oh, nice. Um, now I, I met George Lennox last year. He, he came on. Uh, he came on the show actually. Um, I, it was it's cool to see because he's been doing. Is he quite? Is he local? Uh, yeah, I, I, I picked that up at the um, the Percodi Mark. Um, he was there with some copies of his books, and he got, got him to sign it for me. So, um, yeah, no, he's not as local. I'm not sure exactly what he's for. George Lennox. I think I might have yeah. just randomly. Yeah, I think where is it? We have to grab a copy. Yeah, mm. he, I think he's um having a. I don't know if anyone else is. I, I've seen he, he's he's doing a lot of the markets this this year. Mm. Um, he, I've been a lot of conventions. So. Yeah, I've, I've 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 seen the convention lists for the the big city, the big Glasgow city Glasgow page stuff. So, um, his mm-hmm. his name his names. I think he's doing most of Scotland. To be honest, um, this is the V two A, which um, Bensky was talking about there. Uh, Mad Ma- Mad Max meets the Suicide Squad. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty good. Nice, it was good. Is that on Kickstarter right now? Um, no, it's come off there, Kickstarter. Then. I think you can now buy it on Indiegogo. Right. So you can you can pick it up, right? Yeah, so. That's good. That's good. Mm. What have you been reading, Dave? I have been reading a few bits and bobs this week, Mister Nicholson. Oh yes, I have. I um, finished off a couple of wee ones I picked up the call a couple of weeks ago. Daredevil, oh, yeah. and actually something you like, Jeff. Uh, what armor is it? Yeah, Power Rangers. Oh, oh uh, Lord Dracon. Yeah. yeah. So that's the yeah. third issue. Um, oh, I've, I've, not, I've, not, I've not read it in about six months. A, uh, well, these are a bargain uh, purchase that I bought. They're a pound for three, I think. And uh, I've read them. Oh, yeah, that's a bargain. However, the Power Ranger stuff is epic. I, I, I know. I sound like I sound like I'm banging a all right guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got those. I got those last week as well. So. <laughs> yeah, you just don't read them yet, have you? I really enjoyed this, Jeff. This is good. Um, I like the size of it as well. It's a nice size of a comic. That yeah. nice again, I, again, I've got, I've got, I can't lie, that, that was kind of um, Colin does that size, but also um, that, 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 I don't know, maybe a couple of years ago, and I, I maybe, I don't know if it's just Scotland, but it did seem to be that was just a kind of. As I, got into, as, as I got into indie comics, that was the go-to size. So, like James Lawrence uses it a similar size for um, right. Legend of Mariposa, and I just, I, I, I just like it. So, I, when right. I was, when I was, uh, I had, I had the option for bigger, but I thought, no, that's nice. Well, I really enjoyed the first three issues. Um, there's a fourth one coming, Jeff. Is that right? Uh, it's, it's 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 on the rain table. Yeah, hopefully hopefully by about thought bubble time actually. And so. it, will that close off this storyline? Yeah, um, it's going to be like a bumper last edition, just because I want to finish it. Um, right. I can't remember who it was, but we had a guest on a couple of months ago who said that his number one tip for aspiring writers would be to start small. Um, I wish I'd had that guest on before I wrote Spirit of Inky because um, but it's a it's a superhero like. Like it, it, it should be a trade paperback told over like four or five issues, I think. So, um, but yeah, um, yeah, I'm glad you well, enjoyed, I enjoyed it. it, man. I thought it was good I'm quality, good, good storyline. I'm, I'm looking forward to the, the final issue, see what's how it's all going to end up. Top marks. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> um, was so, it's not new, game. but I just got around to reading it. Oh, oh yeah, it's bastards. number two. <laughs> Uh, and Dave and I, we met. Um, what's what's Mr. Sharpton's name? I get a bit confused about Eric guys. Peterson, isn't it? Yeah, Eric Peterson. We met him at Lawless, and he was just a gentleman, absolute gentleman. He was, yeah. he was he was manically going around for number one, getting them all signed by all the artists who were there who'd done them. And um, it's really clever because he's obviously got deals where he's selling the comics individually um, as well. Because on Facebook today, he was 
talking about a new strip that's coming out in between. So in the States, where they sell, I think, quite large numbers, you can buy the floppies. Um, but I don't know whether these hard, I don't know whether these hardbacks are available in bookstores or not, or whether we just happen to have got them because this is a Kickstarter edition. Um, and well, it should be cool. It looks nice and not terribly cheap, but a really nice format. Really, you know, it's a solid yeah, book. Nice size. Yeah, that looks, <laughs> yeah, that looks great on a shelf of it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm looking forward to seeing more of those coming, but they do take a little while to get to you. Um, I'll be honest, I don't buy many floppies at the moment. I'm one of those guys who gets the word about what people are reading and then go and buy the trade, you know, buy a collection or, or, or what have you. So yeah, I'd love I'm to know the same, what, actually. What, what would you recommend that's new that I should be reading at the moment? What, what would you say? Um, something is killing the children. It's Possibly exactly what I was going to say. Oh, yeah, right. it's phenomenal. Uh, it's, and it's, very, it's very, very it's, good. Are you going to do a post tomorrow on the 1977 about that? Because you do your Friday post, don't you? What people, what you're reading? What are people are reading? Yeah, yeah. So what is that, that trade? Department or Department is that a continual, continual series? series? It's a continual series. I think it's on issue 11. Might be a little bit past that. Yeah, it's. Um, 11, I think 12, they, they bought like the first. Yeah, they bought the first trade back. Okay, I right. Yeah, it's it's re it's really well. I mean, it, it it's. It's good enough that it's clear that it's going to make a TV series or film. You can just tell it's right, just yeah. got that vibe about it. It's the really cool uh, lead character, obviously monsters and so on. Um, very well written. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's excellent. On oh, stray dogs, I can't read enough about this. I read about this every week. Stray dogs. Stray dogs. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, dogs. yeah, it's about a, a, a dog that gets kidnapped um, and goes into a house, and there's multiple dogs there. And there's only one dog can remember what happened to him, and he thinks it was a serial killer who went into the house, killed his previous owner, and stole the dog. So, and this house now has got multiple oh, wow. dogs in it, but the, the dogs can't remember. I think I've got some, and they, they cover up for them. Or... Oh, I think I've got them here. They cover up for them are phenomenal, and I'll not have it here. <laughs> sure, son. No, I know. I mean... I've explained you as well, just to make you feel slightly more awkward. <laughs> oh, <laughs> lovely. Yes, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's stunning. That is stunning. Oh, I'll have to check that out. I, I rave about this every other week. I'm talking about this. Um, these are the movie variant covers. Lovely. Oh, the first one yeah, is the as well. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Midsummer, yeah. And, 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 and I, the artwork, and the artwork and that's very, it's very Disney, the artwork. Um, oh, okay. It's just, and what, what company is that produced by? Um, it's... Oops, yeah, yeah. It's, it's an image, image comic, so it's oh, not independent. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the, the fourth issue is out, I think, and the trade will be out in a couple of months. Cool. Kind of recommend that enough. I think I talked about that just last week and the week before. Yes. Great. Um, no, um, I, I, I did. The, I, I want to check out Street Dogs as well. I've heard really good things about it across like online. It's, it's getting good re-ups online, and mm. um, it's, it's, it's brilliant. Just yeah. Fab. But if you if you if you if you if you'd had an investment, if you got something is killing the children, number one, number one to six actually, it's ridiculous. Um. Yeah, I think the that, first six that? issues, first first issues going for two or three hundred pounds now. First six, you could probably get eight hundred to a thousand for for the first six issues yeah. that were three ninety nine coins. Wow. So that's, that's, so that's just the flipper part. I didn't I didn't keep any issues of that, unfortunately. Yeah. I just wanted to talk about a a comic that I picked up this week. Um, I was approached by, um, actually, like I, when when I asked about proofreading my comic, um, I. I um, somebody got in touch with me and was like, I'll proofread yours if you proofread mine. But actually, his is released. Um, so I, I just wanted to give a shout out to this. I'll see if I can get it up in a second. Um, it's called Road, uh, Roundhouse Hooligans. Um, and I got issue one uh, sent to me this week by uh, Lucas Kime. Um, uh, just a really, it's Freefall Comics. Just make sure you can see that here. Um, Freefall Comics is his company. So he wrote the story. Just a. Um, Quite a quick, a, a cool. Uh, I've only got issue one. Issue two has just finished kickstarting successfully, 
but it's a, it's a cool wee story about a, a, a young woman whose family have a, have have kind of been torn apart in some of them um, they had an altercation with some bike uh, motorbike cyclists as you can see here uh, the, the father character who has some sort of hidden baggage um, has a, some sort of history that he's not um that, that isn't revealed in the issue but it results in um, him and, and and the mother character passing away and um quite violently and the the, uh, the two sort of the, the children characters, uh, two sisters, they've they sort of been separating at, at, from a very young age. And uh, the story continues on like t maybe 10, 15 years later where the older sister is trying to find her younger sister who I think has been abducted by this motorcycle gang. But um, it, it, I, I really liked it because it was um, it was kind of playing around with the idea that um, the, he the heroes, the protagonists are, uh, are, are three former um, former residents of a of a, a residential care home for troubled children. So they're um they're 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 not reliable they're not reliable story keep what's that called? The reliable um, narrator. They're not reliable narrators. They're not um a they're they're kinda of messed up. They've they're, they're they're dealing with sort of a lot of internal and external baggage, but ultimately they believe the right thing for them to do is to try and rescue the younger member of their group from from the clutches of this uh, this gang it's just a really cool story and i um beautifully is drawn. it a standalone story is it, is it it's first issue part? one so um i was speaking to lucas this morning um i think he aims to do six or seven issues but um issue one and two are out now issue three will be out quite soon just really really well really well done um as it's i think everyone should check it uh, if you're interested check it free fall comics you can just google them but it's freefallcomics.gumroad.com um but uh, the, the stuff looks brilliant. Like um, when he sent it to me, and that, um, it helps say happens quite a lot on um, at, through the regular. So a lot of people will email us and say, can, we, "Can you check out my stuff and let me know what you think?" And um, um, I, if you said, if you told, if you told me that um, the comic was had been released by one of the big one of the big publishers, I wouldn't have batted an eyelid. It, lo it looks the part, and the story is really, really strong. Um, yeah, some really yeah. nice art on there. I really like the use of shadows. Let me see what I've got. There we go. So, we, so I'll give you a wee bit more. But, um, yeah, um, yeah, just really uh, the shadows and the, I, um, there were there was a, a couple. It's interesting. Um, a couple of bits where I was like, um, and I, I said to Lucas, oh, maybe the bubble was in the wrong place. Um, he he, he was just outstanding. It was like, oh yeah, we've already sorted it. <laughs> it's like you say the um, that sort of that whole reprint thing, but um. But uh, yeah, that's really um, I, I, I just I'm, I'm excited for issues two, and then I think three's coming out really soon as well. So yeah, that was good. That was oh. fine. Uh, I, I had David. Sorry, he's back. Did you go to the? <laughs> um, I had to disappear yeah. before I had an accident. No, nah, no worries. So so good. Um, yeah, thanks for joining us, guys. Um, I've got the the seventy seven comic dot bigcartel dot com page. That's where that's where people can pick up back issues. Is that right? Well, that's our store. Um, yeah. If people want to go to another um, supplier, there's Get My Comics, um, and they do a lot of um, sorting for a lot of people online and, and all the shops as well. So that's Get My Comics. Big Cartel's us directly. Um, the creators will get their own little tranche. So, you know, you know Dave, you get your copies off Dave. Um, hopefully, we'll get ours tomorrow, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> it's my day off. It's, I'm glad actually. It's my day off work tomorrow, so they won't, they won't end up on the doorstep soaking wet next time. So no, yeah, we, we're all going to get a box of them. You see, we get we get a fair few, and um, I think the courier service is not first class. I don't mean that they don't offer a good service, of course, fantastic. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I've had it once where literally I was the very last person to get to get them. That was so funny, um, and that that was funny. <laughs> But there uh, you go. Cycle stuff. It's, it's, yeah. it's the things you don't think about, though. Like um, in, in comic creation, it's just like the postal service. Like um, we we talk about this quite a lot, but like um, I I I I do all my posting. If you live locally, I'll, I'll just post by hand. Um, but obviously, I, I do get a couple of Kickstarter backers that are uh, like abroad. And there's always that. I don't know if you guys have it when you have to go to the post office and and you get asked questions like, "What is it?" How much does it cost? What's the value? And they're they're actually really tricky questions as a comic creator. 
to like, well, retail value is a fiver, but you know, that's three months of my life in there. So <laughs> it's been yeah. 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 So I, I was sending stuff away to CGC to be vet, to be um, to be slabbed uh, two months ago. I was including a Sandman number one that I had, and the guy was like, you know, okay, you send him these comics. And it's, it's not worthwhile to get them done one at a time. So there was like 20 comics um, of the most expensive stuff that I sold. And the guy was like, what's in it? Comics. And he's like, okay, it's insured for £200. I was like, that's, 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 that's not good. There's like, you know, there's like £1,500 worth of comics in there. I was like, yeah. Comics. Well, I, received, <laughs> I was like, y yeah. I received through the post nine pages of, of uh, Glenn Fabry artwork. Mm. You know, yeah, and you be worried about it, thinking, you know, you know, send that back. What's that worth? You know, it's just like you know. Oh so. yeah, definitely. Yeah. I've, I've, I've got I've got a Glen Fabry picture up on my on the wall in my shop, and it's my pride and joy. Joy, um, sketchy Jesse Custer, signed by Glen. Nice. So go on then. As a man who bought Sandman number one and sold the bundle at seventy five of them about fifteen years ago, what's the number one worth these days in good condition? Hundred. Uh, yeah, not, well, yeah, probably probably closer to two hundred if it's if it's right. if it's not slabbed or anything like that, and yeah. and yeah, maybe three to five at the moment if it, yeah. if it's over is, nine. Is Hellblazer as valuable, or is that not quite the same standard? Um, no, no, not quite because there's no like there's no real Hellblazer's not worth as much as it's Jamie Delano, isn't it? It's not. It's not it's Jamie Delano. Why? Yeah. But the Swamp thing where. Um, where Constantine was first, first brought in. That's a £200 comic. Is that 37? Number 37? 37, I think it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Alan Moore started in 24, didn't he? I bought all those. Yes. Um, they were so cheap when I started buying them. They were literally double the price. They were just like £1.20. I think the comic was retailing at 60p. And right, now, they're, 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 they're worth far more than that now. They have yeah, yeah. one things. Yeah, they're all... You've got a good value on all of them, if, you, yeah. if you've still got them. So, aye. So we saw, by the way, it's just a little aside, but we saw... Um, I think on our group, someone was mentioning about CGC um, slabbing or another company, CGX, wherever it is, um, mm. 2000 ADs. So it's happened at oh, last. Yeah. You know, they're, they're being got the size. Yeah. yeah. They never, never used them because they, they, were, they were odd sizes. And, and, and because 2000 ADs had about three different sizes mm. yeah. um, since it came along as well. Like they, I don't think CGC were, were keeping really? on it, but yeah, it might be CVCS or PGX is the other, the other two ones. I wonder. I wonder what that'll do for. The, I wonder what that'll lead to with terms of pricing and stuff like that. Because the, the prices on two thousand of these are all over the place. Like you know, you can you can pick them up for peanuts and pick them up. Apart from apart from one or two issues, there's there's one issue like number two was first dread and that's quite expensive. Yeah. There's one issue and I forget the number, but there's one issue where they had a flood in the um, is it twelve oh eight? Yeah, and only so many made it out. It was only about five percent of the print run yeah. ever made it out. And that's the one which is is the most sought after because so i i, I run an action group there's away, a guy, okay there's a guy called dave Pleen who bought who's got issue 37 which is of course the great issue for action because it was the pulp issue yeah. and um, it's actually way more valuable than any 2000s anything like that but we've had a conversation and then we've got really serious collectors in our groups people who come mm -hmm. for art as well and the general consensus is although we think oh they're expensive I think they've got an awful long way to go. It only needs eventually one of the strips to be op to be um, optioned, doesn't it? Properly again, yeah. you know, whether it's Dread, whether it's Road Trooper, I don't know. You know, who's not to say that the most valuable one becomes the introductory Road Trooper? Was it two three seven or whatever two three two? I, can't I absolutely agree. Strontium Dogs and Rogue Trooper. All it needs is for somebody yeah. to do something serious with them. Yeah. Um, Your know, ABC Warriors as as, yeah. as a sort of yeah, an anime or something like that. You know, there's there's so many of these. Which I've got the, the, the capability to go up much higher if somebody does something with them. Maybe like Slade. Slade would be amazing as like a. Oh, yeah. yeah. So when, when they first when they start first started doing like um, Game of Thrones and all these kind of pro and uh, in Britannia and all these programs, mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. Oh, in particularly Britannia, I was like, somebody needs to pick up Slade. Like, there's <laughs> no, there's no reason why that's not a TV program. Um, who's, who's the character? Well, is, it, is it something I'm dead? I'm Division 77 and V myself. That's what I'm going to <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going to pick up as many variant covers of that as I can so that I can ride the wave in 20 years. When... 
I'm looking at all the different variant covers for and them. they are limited we only do like 150 or 200 yeah. of them. so we try and make sure that they and people say to us oh can we get them can we buy them and like yeah at the time on the Kickstarter but after that they've kind of gone you yeah, know yeah because yeah. yeah, mm -hmm. oh, that's that's one of the weird things it costs so much to because because obviously we're not printing in the high thousands mark mm. to actually reprint a if we get say to 200 of a variant cover maybe less to actually go out and get another 200 it costs that much money it's just it's not even yeah, worth it you know yeah. we certainly wouldn't make any money on it so it's just it's, it's just pointless so the, if you have got the variants the really i mean this there's some of the variants i haven't even got because like people have come along and goes oh, i really need this one i'm like yeah yeah i'll get another one one day and no so, no oh, unless i'm going to break it to bed I know, I know. I, I'm not. I'm not in it for the money, mate. <laughs> no, I'm not. I Definitely am. not. <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us. I don't. Has anyone got That's anything good. else, comic-wise or geek-wise or extended thingy they want to blather about? Just one thing, and I'll say this, and it's not this Saturday, but it's next Saturday. But it's just in case I forget to thing it in. Um, if you've got a local comic shop, next Saturday, a week on Saturday, August fourteenth, is Free Comic Book Day. Um, get yourself along to your local comic shop, wherever you are. Obviously, if you're in Kirkcaldy, you know, come come along and see me. If you're in Dunfermline, get yourself along and see Albie at a little shop of heroes. Wherever you are, free comic book days is, is a big day for comic shops, and we've not had a proper one since lockdown. You know, lockdown one, so get along and support your local guy there. Absolutely. Nice. Awesome stuff. Cool. Right, guys. Cool. Um, yeah, would you, Dave and Binks, do you want to guys want to do one more? Um, like, do you want to run through your your social medias and where we can check you out? And okay, so on Facebook, it's the seventy seven comic. Um, awesome. That's a chat group. That's much of our that's our social stuff. Um, we got nineteen seventy seven hyphen to two thousand AD, which is our, yeah. you know. I love, I love that one. Fan, that's fan, fan. That's we, we, we hit yesterday. We got to ten thousand, which was nice. So that was a that was a nice day. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Um, I probably shouldn't. I should print. That's that's where I. I, I obviously I'm, I'm friends with him now because we chat quite a lot. But I met Dave through. I met Dave Pugh through there. He was he was on there, and I was yeah. like, oh, hi, a massive Slade fan, massive fan of a uh, your uh, your your work on the uh, the mask um, annuals. Did of you the see medieval. when he was selling them all? Because he came yeah, through us, well, the only um, stuff was sold at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's, I that's actually, one of the crazy. I missed that, and I was gutted. I missed, I missed oh, the right. mask stuff. I saw somebody was selling it, and they, he, or he was selling it, and somebody else was selling it. But then somebody's got in touch with us on a uh, Twitter and said, "No, as Jeff was talking about um, mask comics, I've got some lying around. Do you want? Does he want them?" It's like, oh my god, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like more than you can imagine. <laughs> And he, I, sold I, it all, I, he sold it all really low as well. The, the prices he sold his stuff for yeah. was just incredible. Well, he, he was fundraising for his Thai family. He was, he? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, really good. Brilliant. Really good. Wonderful artist. To catch up with him. He's, he still intends to come over and meet us at Lawless. He says he's going to buy us a drink kind of thing. Which really lovely. Yeah. Uh, it's really lovely. Yeah. We had him on the same day we had, the same day that we had you and Joe on at um, the Edinburgh, the, the, the Edinburgh Comic Con, the Capital Sci-Fi Con that we had you and Joe on at Ben. We had a we had Dave we had David Pugh on earlier that day, and um, he he has some excellent stories of just like like sitting and sitting at conventions in the mid eighties as like Alan Moore's talking about nine paneling his next comic and stuff like that. And wow. Going, oh, oh, all right, okay, good luck with that, man. <laughs> that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was that comic? Yeah, whatever. No, he'll, he'll, he'll never take off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, on Saturday, um, if you join us via the, our own group, the 77 Comic, there'll be a link. Um, we've got, uh, say, we've got a show. I think it's from one o'clock till three o'clock, and um, that'll be great. That'll be like this, but probably lots of. Uh, it'll be the Muppet Show, you know, with lots of yeah. people on it. So uh, we'll do one of those again, and hopefully it will pass without too much incident, and it will be good fun. And uh, that's <laughs> us next. Yeah. So, uh, uh, guys, thanks so much for having me back on. I'm sorry I didn't move any furniture today, but there we go. Oh, oh, next time. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. It was really nice to meet you, Dave. Cheers, guys. No, really nice to meet you guys. Thank <laughs> you very much indeed. Yep. Nice All the best. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers.